integration in logical learning. Today we are going to learn about life processes. Biology is the study of living things. All living things are called organisms but plants and animals are living organisms. But how we decide whether something is living or not living depends on seven life processes. If something is living, it will carry out the seven life processes below. Movement. Both animals and plants have the ability to do move. Plants are rooted and move slowly as they grow. Their roots move down into the soil and their stems move up towards the light. Animals on the other hand move quickly and can move their entire bodies. They can move in search of food, shelter or to avoid danger. Respiration. Respiration is the process of extracting energy out of the food we eat. All living things respire because they need energy to grow, to replace worn out parts and to move. Respiration takes place in the mitochondria of the cell. Sensitivity. All living organisms are sensitive. This means that they have an awareness of changes in the environment. Animals respond quickly to stimuli such as heat, light, sound, touch and chemicals which have taste and smell. On the other hand, plants generally appear less sensitive and their response is slower. Growth. All living organisms grow. Plants continue growing throughout their lives. Animals stop growing once they reach adulthood. Even when growth stops, materials within an animal's body are still being replaced from its food. Excretion. All living things that make waste products, this can be useless or harmful to it and therefore need to be get rid of. Excretion is the process of getting rid of metabolic waste. Plants store waste substances in their leaves the waste is removed when the leaves fall off. Animals breathe out waste carbon dioxide, other waste substances leave the body in urine and sweat. Reproduction. All living things must produce offspring like themselves in order for their species to survive. This is the process known as reproduction. Plants reproduce seeds that give rise to new plants of the same species. Animals lay eggs or have babies. Reproduction can be of two types. Sexual which involves two parents and the union of two gametes. And asexual where one parent can reproduce itself. Nutrition. Nutrition is needed for energy and growth. Both plants and animals need food. Plants are able to make their own food by photosynthesis. They use sunlight to turn simple molecules like carbon dioxide and water into more complex carbohydrate molecules. Animals are unable to make their own food, so they rely on other plants and other animals for their nutrition. Animals take in complex substances and break them down into small, simple and soluble molecules which can be used for energy and growth. In the case of a single-celled organism, no specific organs for taking in food, exchange of gases or removal of waste must be needed because the entire surface of the organism is in contact with the environment. In multicellular organisms, all the cells may not be in direct contact with the surrounding environment. Thus, simple diffusion will not meet the requirements of all the cells. Multicellular organisms, various body parts have specialized in the functions they perform. Nutrition. Energy required to carry out different life processes is obtained through the process of nutrition. Depending on the mode of obtaining nutrition, organisms are classified as autotrophs or heterotrophs. Autotrophs can prepare their own food from simple inorganic sources such as carbon dioxide and water. Examples green plants and some bacteria. Heterotrophs cannot synthesize their own food and are dependent on other organisms for obtaining complex organic substances for nutrition. Example animals and fungi. 
autotrophic nutrition a type of nutrition in which organisms synthesize the organic materials they require from inorganic sources major sources of carbon and nitrogen are carbon dioxide and nitrates respectively all green plants are autotrophic and use light as a source of energy for the synthesis of food through photosynthesis the following events occur during this process absorption of light energy by chlorophyll conversion of light energy to chemical energy and splitting of water molecules into hydrogen and oxygen reduction of carbon dioxide to carbohydrates these green plants absorb the water from the soil by roots carbon dioxide enters from the atmosphere through stomata sunlight is absorbed by chlorophyll and the other green plants of the trees now what is heterotrophic nutrition all heterotrophs depend on autotrophs for their nutrition the three main types of heterotrophic nutrition are holozoic nutrition the complex food is taken into a specialized digestive system and broken down into small pieces to be absorbed example amoeba humans now what is saprophytic nutrition organisms that feed on dead organic remains of other organisms example fungi like bread molds yeast and mushrooms now what is parasitic nutrition organisms obtain food from other living organisms the host with the host receiving no benefit from the parasite example cascata ticks lice leeches and tapeworms nutrition in amoeba single celled organisms the food may be taken in the entire surface example amoeba takes in food using temporary finger like extensions of the cell surface which fuse over the food particle forming a food vacuole inside the food vacuole complex substances are broken down into a simpler one which then diffuse into the cytoplasm the remaining undigested material is moved to the surface of the cell and thrown out nutrition in human beings in humans the digestion of food takes place in the alimentary canal made up of various organs and glands this process includes the following steps in the mouth food is crushed into the small particles through chewing and mixed with saliva which contains the amylase for digesting starch on swallowing the food passes through the pharynx and esophagus to reach the stomach gastric juice contains pepsin for digesting proteins hcl and mucus The hydrochloric acid creates an acidic medium which facilitates the action of enzyme pepsin. The mucus protects the inner lining of the stomach from the action of the acid under normal conditions. Now from the stomach the food now enters the small intestine. The small intestine is the site of complete digestion of carbohydrates, proteins and fats. Now the liver secretes bile which emulsifies the fat. The pancreas secretes pancreatic juice which contains the enzymes amylase, trypsin and lipase for digesting the starch proteins and fats respectively. In the small intestine carbohydrates, proteins and fats are completely digested into glucose, amino acids, fatty acids and glycerol. The villi of the small intestine absorb the digested food and supply it to a very cell to the body. Now the unabsorbed food is sent into the large intestine where more villi will absorb the water from this material. The rest of the material is removed from the body via the anus. Thank you students for watching this video.